Hi guys, Mulos here. So today's video, I'm going to talk about cryptocurrency in Zambia, particularly using Yellow Card, which is my preferred platform. I'm going to talk about some of the complaints and issues people have had with Yellow Card. I'll also talk about some of the complementary side of things with Yellow Card, which people have been mentioning in the my comment section and which I have also experienced. I'll also talk about why Yellow Card remains my primary or main cryptocurrency platform that I use in Zambia. I'm going to leave relevant timestamps in the description so that you can just jump to the particular part of the video that you want to watch or see. And I'm also going to leave all the relevant links in the description, including links to other crypto platforms that I use in case you don't want to use Yellow Card for whatever particular reason. By default, you've got a Quacha wallet where you, you can deposit via bank transfer. This one can take a bit of time and under bank transfer. So if I just put in a dummy amount, so bank transfer, you need to put in a reference, which is your yellow card account number, which is your phone number. You also need to put in the amount. The bank is Standbig Bank. But if you click the drop down arrow, you can also send to Standbig Bank using the Momo. So here under Momo mobile money, you can then put to Standbig Bank under this account number and you still need to put in the reference uh, number. So this is where a lot of people get it wrong. They, they do expect that once they do a bank transfer on Friday 16 hours, the money is going to reflect in their yellow card instantly. Zambian bank transfers don't work like that. They can even be very slow. So here it says it takes up to three, two to three days. And this they're talking about working days. If you send a transfer during a public holiday or a weekend, those are not counted. So this is why I don't recommend you use bank transfer. Most people are not patient. Most people will have trouble putting in a reference because it's going to show plus 260 and then some banks don't accept special characters like a plus. So it's just a whole lot of a mess. I prefer to use Spen. So Spen is an app. If you have a Spen account, it's very, very easy and straightforward and practically instant for the funds to reflect in your yellow card. Okay, not really instant. Sometimes it takes seconds up to a maximum of 30 minutes. Then here on withdrawing kwacha, you've got options of withdrawing via spin, which is going to cost you 15 kwacha and it's instant. Once the funds are in your spin account, you've got options of cashing out. You can cash out at Kazan. You can transfer to most Zambian bank accounts. You can transfer to all mobile money accounts. You also have an option to do a manual mobile money withdrawal. It costs 15 kwacha. It says it takes up to 24 to 48 hours. This is a manual process, so people have to be in the offices to initiate and approve. So if you are not a patient person, open a spend account, do it instantly. Then here, a manual bank withdrawal, EFT, electronic fund transfer. The fee is 15 kwacha. It says it takes up to 24 to 48 hours. This is working days. So remember that Zambian bank transfers are dependent on a number of variables, including the time of day that you're doing the transfer, whether there's a public holiday or a weekend involved in all. Majority of people are not patient. So do not try to do a bank transfer if you're not going to wait patiently for your funds to reflect and you want the money instantly. If you're like me and you need the money instantly, open a SPEN account, get the SPEN app and verify it and you'll be able to receive instantly from yellow card to your spin and you have no issues. So now USDT. USDT is a TRC20 type wallet. There's only one problem which I've encountered and that is on sending USDT from yellow card. It does delay and it does drag. Uh, this is especially noticeable after the recent updates that they've done. So I do not recommend sending USDT out of yellow card at the moment because that could take anywhere from a couple of minutes to a whole day. So most people when sending USDT TRC20, they expect the funds to be received on the other wallet, external wallet within five minutes. So if it does delay and drag, it does become frustrating and uh, it can give you a lot of issues. And then crypto is a time sensitive uh, commodity or instrument. So any delays in sending USDT TRC20 can give you serious, serious issues. So I do recommend you wait until future updates when yellow card has sorted out the issue on sending usdt trc20 out receiving usdt trc20 is a whole separate issue it works it's highly efficient and that is how i send all my crypto from binance to yellow card i just convert it to usdt in binance 
and then send to my uh, yellow card uh, USDT wallet. It takes under five minutes. I'm able to then convert to Quacha, cash out, or do whatever I need to do with the USDT. Now, when it comes to Bitcoin, this is where yellow card shines. It really, really works well with Bitcoin. You're able to buy, sell, send, receive Bitcoin rather efficiently. There are occasional times that uh, issues do happen and coincidentally while I was making this video I did try to send some Bitcoin and the transaction failed now for full transparency and disclosure I have included that in the video but majority of times I've actually sent out Bitcoin from yellow card the funds have reached without issue also when you're receiving Bitcoin in yellow card you are able to receive without issues as long as it's as receiving or sending to or from a BTC wallet that pays out in BTC. Remember that crypto has got various variants of the same crypto. So there's BTC, then there's BTC1, there's a BEP20, you know, all sorts of different wallet types. Just make sure you're dealing with a BTC wallet and you should be okay. If you need to see your Bitcoin wallet, simply click on BTC, come here to receive copy the wallet and that's it now the next wallet is ethereum so majority of people don't need ethereum wallets this is an erc20 type wallet so that means that sending and receiving you're going to be charged about 35 dollars equivalent for sending uh, an ethereum erc20 wallet so unless you are a heavy user and you are a tier 2 or tier 3 verified account on yellow card you need to apply for an ethereum wallet for them to give you and uh, to be very honest, I don't use it much. I just got it for trying to review and test out. But um, the fees on Ethereum are just too high that I don't even use it at all. Okay, so just to show how active and use and how much I use my yellow card account and why it's my primary account. I'm just going to come here under history and I'll show you all the transactions that I've done over time. Now, some of the information on this side on the transaction history, it shows people's uh, wallet addresses, a person or two who has sent me money. So I'm going to blur out this side. Then we can just start scrolling. You see here, the, the, the last transaction I did was yesterday. Uh, I was sending out uh, some Bitcoin. I do purchase Bitcoin. I do cash deposits and all. So I'm just going to scroll down. You see how many transactions I've done. And there are a lot. I top up Quacha. I withdraw Quacha. I send and receive Bitcoin USDT. And I do all manner of transactions. So despite the fact that Yellow Card only has a Zambian Quacha wallet, Bitcoin wallet and USDT wallet, it is very, very usable for transacting purposes. I know it doesn't have the biggest selection, but it's very, very usable. And that usability is what draws me to it. So you see that I have not even yet reached the bottom of this. So I've done, uh, I think it's over 100 plus, maybe even more than, a, maybe between 100 to 200 transactions from the time I started using yellow card. Uh, initially just opened yellow card. I wasn't using it much. Then later on, I discovered all the functionality and uh, found that it's really, really suitable for my needs. So my first transaction was on 21st April 2021 at 1837 hours. That was the first time I used yellow card. And from that time, I've done a couple hundred transactions. Now, there's also something uh, which uh, someone had mentioned to me once. Uh, this person had checked their their Bitcoin, their yellow card wallet on the blockchain, and uh, what they found was shocking. So I've done, I've searched here. It, I'm going to check my yellow card wallet. So this is what it shows. This address has transacted 58 times on the BT, on the blockchain uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain. It has received a total of 0 0.2107. 8361 BTC, which is $6,198.22, and I sent a total of 0 0.21035247 BTC, which is 6185.55. The current value of this address is 0 0.00043114 uh, Bitcoin, 12.68. So I know what you're going to ask, but Mr. Mullers, how is this possible? Because in this same video that I'm showing you, there's a ten thousand dollars worth of bitcoin in my wallet and the answer is something very very simple which we all missed 
blockchain transactions are when you're sending from one external wallet to another external wallet so inter or is it intra wallet transfers from one yellow card user to another yellow card users don't pass through the blockchain it's as good as you sending from your stand big dollar account to stand another stand big dollar account that one doesn't pass through the clearing system or it's not sent as a wire transfer it's just it's just an internal transfer. It works the same if you're sending from Binance to Binance, CX to CX, yellow card to yellow card, Coinbase to Coinbase, Cryptarium to Cryptarium. They don't affect the blockchain. So that's why if you are a very heavy user of, uh, of uh, yellow card and you receive a lot from fellow yellow card users or you send a lot to fellow yellow card users, you won't see most of your transactions appear on the blockchain because it does not actually go through the blockchain it's a fully internal transaction and that's why you see here that i've only done about 58 uh, blockchain transactions from my yellow card account despite me having done over 100 plus transactions uh, in yellow card so that's something you should know about the blockchain it's not all your transactions just those that actually affect the blockchain okay so now we'll talk about the other or all the crypto platforms that i use currently so there are more than these but these are the ones that i've settled on so one noticeable omission here is cryptarium i think uh, back in the day i used to love using cryptarium because cryptarium worked well for people in zambia you could deposit via uh, zazu mastercard or any other allowed card you could withdraw to Zazu MasterCard and I was doing a lot of transactions there. Then from out the blue, they just updated their app and basically removed Zambian functionality. So it became really pointless to continue using it. But it still works. I will leave a link in the description if you want to open a Cryptarium wallet. So the other wallets that I use is Binance. So Binance, Binance allows you to purchase using some Zambian bank cards. It's trial and error to know which cards actually work, which ones don't. So I won't even go into detail on which ones work. I, I know FNB works on Binance. A lot of other cards don't work. My Zazu card works on Binance. And a lot of other Zazu cards don't work on Binance. I used to use my uh, Atlas Mara prepaid card on Binance. Um, so I'm really not sure all the other bank cards which work on Binance. Uh, there's about a 4% plus or minus which is added on crypto purchasing in Binance and it also works for peer-to-peer -peer trading except that Zambian peer-to-peer -peer platforms are not really supported because if you're looking to peer-to-peer -to, -peer to MTN money, mobile money in Zambia, Zambian bank accounts, e-wallets and all those things you won't really get it in uh, Binance. There's also Coinbase. Now Coinbase doesn't accept most Zambian cards and then you're only limited to about a hundred dollars that you can or purchase by card in a month so it's really difficult purchasing crypto using zambian bank cards and the likes into coinbase but you're able to send from external wallets a number of different cryptos into coinbase and then you can be able to trade and then cash out from coinbase to yellow card or coinbase to any of these other uh, crypto platforms so i do use coinbase quite heavily uh, to trade crypto but uh, loading and withdrawing from coinbase uh, using zambian platforms is a bit cumbersome there's also trust wallet now trust wallet is uh, basically just an external wallet that you can use for different types of crypto it's not the most user friendly out there um, i did once send usdt trc20 into my trust wallet then i discovered that i couldn't convert it to bitcoin or i couldn't convert it to anything else it was just it was a hell to just get my uh, usdt out i had to top up i had to top up about a three dollars uh into i had to top up just to get my usdt out because there's a threshold where you can actually withdraw and i was below that so it cost me quite a bit just to get my money out but it's a very very usable it's a very very usable uh, platform if you just want to send and receive or store and keep uh, crypto it's not suitable for trading there's also paxful so paxful is a peer-to-peer -peer trading platform um i almost got scammed about three four five times in paxful so it's a great platform for peer-to-peer -peer trading but just bear in mind that there are a lot of scammers there 
then there's also cx okay so when you come to cx cx um it's another platform that you can purchase uh crypto using zambian bank cards this one allows more zambian bank cards than binance does except uh, i can't use the atlas mara prepaid card on this one and uh, some other zambian bank cards then here if you come under trade pro you're going to see crypto uh the bitcoin price across a number of different uh, exchanges in case you're into arbitrage and you want to buy bitcoin at the lowest cost price and you've got accounts with other exchanges you can actually try to buy from these you can see here that okay ex is uh, selling bitcoin at that price so i mean uh, if you want me to make a video on that let me know in the comment section i'll try to make a video about okex don't get too over excited there are a lot of terms and conditions for you to be to even try to make some money there then here i'm also going to use uh, cx i'll come here under profile and i'm going to come here under verification so why i've come here under verification is because a lot of times people complain about the yellow card verification process i'm assuming people have not tried to verify using other crypto exchanges you can jump through hoops trying to verify in some of the other exchanges so here on uh, cx i'm stage one verified identity verification i can deposit up to three thousand dollars per day and withdraw up to ten thousand a day my address verification is also done i can deposit withdrawals up to ten thousand a day and it allows bank transfers then enhanced verification is when you want to do unlimited deposits and withdrawals priority support so when you come to yellow card you see here that the yellow card price is currently 29,298.56 then if you come here to cx and you see the prices here you see that um, the price on yellow card is actually lower currently so what happens is this that yellow card actually usually offers cheaper bitcoin if you are a zambian purchaser of bitcoin yellow card pricing differs country to country but in zambia yellow card is actually the best or lowest platform to buy bitcoin on i've even made a video on that link uh, you can check up here or link in the description where i compared where i compared purchasing bitcoin from yellow card cx and binance and uh, in all cases yellow card gave me the most uh, bang for my buck then the other thing also is uh withdrawal fees when you're withdrawing uh like let's say bitcoin from uh, platforms bitcoin or usdt yellow card has the lower gas fees it, it their gas fees are even lower than coinbase binance and cx uh, bitcoin gas fees are about 35 to 40 dollars coinbase and yellow card they are usually under two dollars in gas fees so that's why i really like to use coinbase because of the gas fees and that's why i love to use yellow card because of the gas fees packs for the gas fees are even higher than binance and cex with some commission thrown in then also when you're buying crypto most of the platforms what you see is not what you get because they are cost added the commissions added on like binance will add some commission cx will add some commission as well okay so now let me also get to some of the most common questions i get asked i've answered this before but here we are so why don't i give my phone number email address or contact details to people requesting you need to understand that usually you are not the only one asking a lot of times people ask me for my contact details so that they can contact me to be a personal mentor or trainer or educator to them on crypto and this is a time consuming venture guys i really don't have the time i do work i also have a family and there are also other commitments that are there so it's not possible to just find to just find time and answer somebody whose questions are, have already been answered in some of the many videos that i've done simply take the time to just search in my uh videos and you probably find the answer to what you're asking i have talked about arbitrage i have talked about the other crypto platforms that i use i've tried to answer crypto questions numerous times so it's not possible practical or feasible or even logical for me to become your personal one-on-one -on -one tutor on cryptocurrency yeah, it, it 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 takes a lot of time it's 
I just simply can't manage to find the time to be to be working one on one with somebody to answer all these. And then the other thing also is that you can you can actually find all this information readily available online. It's just a question of doing your YouTube searches, your Google searches, trial and error and all. But if you really do want, if you find you can't find that information and you'd like me to tackle it, please leave in the comment section. I do go through each and all of my comments and then I'll find the time to make the video explaining uh, what you're asking. But if it's one to one, I really will not be able to help you on that one. Now, the second thing. Well, the next thing is on yellow card verification or account setup. So a lot of people have complained that uh, they were unable to set up or register on the yellow card app. So this one, I did speak to someone at yellow card and uh, he said the issue has been fixed. Uh, simply update the app to the latest version. If that doesn't fail, if that still fails, sorry, uh, delete the app, then reinstall it or uninstall the app, then reinstall it and you should be good to go. Now, when it comes to account verification, this has happened to me across multiple platforms. Make sure that the lighting is good, okay? Um, I've failed to verify in Skrill, Binance, CX, and a whole host of other platforms because the lighting was bad. When I was taking pictures of my ID, I didn't factor in the lighting, the camera angles and all. So just, just make sure that the lighting is okay uh, try to use your your camera your phone camera and if it still fails try to borrow another camera with a higher resolution camera and do the verification on that uh, it is what it is i've failed to verify on multiple platforms before simply because my camera resolution on the phone was not uh, sufficient i tried to deny it for the longest time until finally i did borrow somebody's phone with a higher resolution and the verification went through one time then on the issue of usdt sending failing or delaying or dragging on for as long as possible that one i have explained it earlier in this video it has a problem uh, sending a usdt on yellow card um, so I personally do not use sending USDT from yellow card because of those delays. I use Bitcoin instead. I'm able to send Bitcoin from yellow card to, to CEX or to Binance. And then when they are received there, I convert it to USDT or to whichever other crypto I do. There's usually a very negligible exchange loss in doing that. So the cost benefit analysis is that while USDT has issues, I use I mean, I use BTC. If it's not a very urgent uh, sending, I can just send USDT and then I just wait it out. I do know that there are some issues. Now, when it comes to sending, receiving or transacting Bitcoin, this one here, usually there are no problems. The only issue is that sometimes the processing time for sending Bitcoin does extend to about 30 minutes an hour. Now, you know, crypto is a price sensitive uh, commodity. So those delays, if they happen during critical market uh, price movements, you could result in a loss or a gain. But uh, for Bitcoin, I usually have no issues and I do send a lot of uh, crypto I mean, Bitcoin using yellow card. So the issue of uh, uh, crypto investing and uh, arbitrage trading. So you need to understand that these things incur a bit of risk. I, I'm, I try by all means in my videos to just talk about the practical side of crypto using crypto and all. If I have to start diving into talking about uh, arbitrage trading using peer to peer trading platforms, or if even just uh, crypto trading using margin trading on Binance or CEX or any of the other platforms or even just trading in general. The simple truth is that the majority of people do not watch the videos in full or in their entirety. A lot of them just check out the headline, they just check out a couple of seconds and then they assume, oh, they go about do their things and then a lot of times when it actually fails they'll come back in the comment section or contact me whichever way and say i tried the method you said it hasn't worked because a b c d a b c d and after going through what they've explained i usually discover that this person did not actually watch the video because in the video i would 
I will, I will always try to explain why I do things a certain way. I explain the pros and cons of all the platforms and uh, what is done. And you find that a person has simply skipped through all those things and then uh, found out through trial and error what I tried to explain in the video for them to try and avoid that trial and error and just go through to or straight to what works. So I try to avoid giving financial advice in my videos because uh, when people go and make losses and all, they will 99% of the time they won't just accept that, okay, I messed up. They'll probably say that you messed up by sharing this information with us, you know, and all that stuff. And then other people will probably even just decide to go crazy and, you know, start writing to their MPs, Bank of Zambia, you know, Securities and Exchange Commission, and all these other things. Um, there's a lot of ignorance out there. I'm not saying you are ignorant, but I'm saying that there are a lot of there's a lot of ignorance out there where people just simply jump straight to conclusions, ignore practical advice, and then blame somebody else for their mistakes. So I try to avoid giving any advice, tips, or information on things that could result in a lot of people losing money and uh, then coming back to blame me for that. So if you want to know about peer-to-peer -peer trading, arbitrage trading, and all those other things, there are plenty of videos out there on YouTube. There are plenty forums, uh, blog posts, blog sites, and the likes out there as well. So the need for ID verification and uh, tiered um, levels. So all the platforms from Binance, uh, CX, Yellowcard, Cryptarium, all these platforms, they all go through rigorous uh, regulations and the likes. So um they need to verify that you are a human being you are who you say you are before they can allow you to transact crypto i know we have all watched these uh, programs movies shows where crypto is just basically the wild wild west where anything goes and people are able to you know money launderers drug traffickers human traffickers and the likes they use crypto to launder money and all of that stuff the simple honest truth is that it's very difficult to launder money using crypto. Um, it's really, really difficult. Um, there is a lot of liquidity in crypto, but the platforms where there's liquidity are the platforms that have very, very high uh, know your customer regulations and all. So it's it, 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 crypto is looked at as a dirty commodity or a dirty instrument for the nefarious or the underhand or under underground uh, members of society to use but the reality is that a lot of uh, fi big financial institutions and players in the game use crypto so so if you want to launder money there are actually easier ways of laundering money in the traditional banking and financial systems real estate and all that crypto is a really really difficult uh, it's a, it's a lot of work if you wanted to launder money through crypto but people look at it that that's the easiest way to launder money okay so now if you want to get full information about cryptocurrencies you can come to investing.com i'll leave a link in the description and uh, you can just come here uh, you'll see you'll be able to see all the cryptocurrencies that investing.com monitors there are 10,251 cryptocurrencies. The total market capitalization of all these cryptocurrencies is $1.25 trillion. The volumes changed hand in the last 24 hours is $69.60 billion. So here you are able to see what the top 10 cryptos are. We'll go through them. There's Bitcoin. Um, that's the current price. It did $27.1 billion last night. Ethereum. That's the current price. It did 14.6 billion last night. There's USDT Tether, which did uh, 49.53 billion last night. Then uh, here are the others: is USD Coin, BNB, XRP, Binance USD or BUSD, Cardano, Solano, and Dogecoin. So usually, most of the crypto traded transacted or moved in a 24-hour period is usdt tether so usually it's usdt tether that that has all the significant volumes moved 
in a day and transacted in a day and if you check here yellow card if you check here yellow card only has the top three available they've got uh, bitcoin ethereum and tether they don't offer any of the other cryptos and uh, there are some pros and cons to that um, if you look at uh, things like luna terra the spectacular collapse of those cryptos imagine if yellow card was offering those cryptos and uh, a lot of people in zambia lost their money through yellow card because of luna terra and all these others what was going to happen they were going to make the most noise they were going to dash to bank of zambia securities and exchange commission bankers association of zambia zambian watchdog or any of all the media houses who would hear them and they would not have mentioned the fact that they were specu they were holding crypto speculatively in their hopes of making millions and the likes like that so uh, crypto is it has value it has a monetary value that you can easily cash out convert to fiat currency um, it's it's a very very viable commodity or instrument that you can hold but remember that there are there are 10,251 different cryptos out there of those 10,251 a good number of them are simply going to collapse because of lack of volumes lack of trades and all and you could fall victim to that so that's another reason why i try to avoid uh, talking about which cryptos i think are going to rise in value and all there is a plus in yellow card only offering the top three cryptos or is it just the top two transacted cryptos because ethereum like i said yellow card doesn't offer there is one very very important point that i forgot and almost left out and i'm sure some of you are probably those who follow my youtube channel were probably wondering at that uh, this ombre hasn't mentioned kenya <laughs> so anyways let me just bring in kenya uh, into the mix last month i traveled to kenya and while there i tried to log into my yellow card account i was told already that yellow card is country restricted you can only use it in the country that you registered your yellow card account in so a uh, only a person in zambia can open a zambian yellow card account only a person in nigeria can open a nigerian yellow card account only a person in kenya can open a kenyan yellow card account so if you are somebody who travels on a regular basis and uh, you hold crypto in your local yellow card wallet which you want to cash out when you travel it won't work so when i was in kenya i tried to log into my yellow card account it absolutely refused it automatically brings uh, on the login page you can't even change or put the country uh, like if you try to log in here if you try to log in here you see the, you see that the plus 260 is fixed and set in stone there's no drop down arrow there's no option to edit if you go in kenya it's going to show you plus 254 so you can there's no option to change your country when you try to log into yellow card outside the country and then if you try to use a vpn just bear in mind that uh, most of these platforms it's if they detect you're using a vpn it raises alarm bells you know it makes you look like you're a shady character or someone a hacker trying to hack into the systems and all most of these platforms have some really really aggressive uh, stances when you try to use a vpn uh, because uh, you can imagine you if you are if you are in north korea or iran and uh, you are trying to log into your platform which is restricted in those countries so that's why they are really really restrictive on vpn use so there are some theories i have on how to use your yellow card when you're out of the country i haven't tested it out i didn't test it out in kenya but next time when i travel if i do travel again i'll try to test those out so just make sure if you do travel and you've got crypto in your yellow card wallet move it out of your yellow card wallet so otherwise you will fail to access those funds when you're abroad okay so we're going to talk about uh, how i cashed out this uh, 170,000 kwacha and also basically show how to send bitcoin from yellow card to any external wallet although the one i'm going to show here failed it normally doesn't fail so remember while i was trying to make this video i did try to send some bitcoin it didn't go through it failed it has happened only once or twice before and i've done dozens and dozens and dozens of these 
So anyways, to send Bitcoin, you simply click on send, select the Bitcoin wallet, click on send. Then you're going to pick the wallet address. Uh, so the amount I was trying to send was 3000 kwacha equivalent of Bitcoin. So I put in that. Then I put in the wallet address. So you can either put in the kwacha amount or the Bitcoin amount you want to send. Put in the Bitcoin address, review and confirm. Okay, so it's an external yellow card. It's an external wallet. It has told me that review and confirm again. And this is where I like yellow card. You're able to see what the gas fee is. This is less than $1. Binance and CEX is $35. So what I do is I work backwards. Once I know the gas fee, I go back to the amount I'm sending and then I reduce it by the gas fee. So that's reducing by about 14 kwacha. It will come to 2869. Then I review and confirm. I confirm the gas fee is still about the same. Then I put in my pin and uh, we can send. Okay, it's done. Now, whenever you're sending Bitcoin, after you have sent, you need to come here to the history. When you click on history, you can then select the amount that you have sent. Oh, let me just go back again, sorry. You click on history, then select the amount that you have sent. And it's going to most likely show you processing. So there's processing complete and failed. It takes a couple of minutes for the processing to be complete. After about three minutes, I came back to check the history and select the payment that I was sending. Okay, so I clicked it. Then here you see that it failed. Remember that failed, it's rare. So it was just that this particular day when I was sending, it actually failed. And then I thought I'll just show it. So the funds were credited back to my Bitcoin wallet. Then I converted the rest to Kwacha. And that's 169,000 Kwacha worth. I left about 3,000 Kwacha worth of Bitcoin to send later on. It did go through later on. I need to set, state that. So now what I'm going to show you is withdrawing the Kwacha from yellow card and uh, using that kwacha externally. So this is where yellow card gets to shine on the withdraw part. It's really, really straightforward. You've got two options. You can do the manual mobile money withdraw or bank account withdraw. These ones take time. So that's why I prefer to just use spend, which is instant and only costs 15 kwacha. So mobile money can take a couple of hours. Anyway, let's go to spend. Okay, so I have a spend account. Uh, just full disclosure, I actually had to send or split the amounts into two spend accounts because my limit per day is 100,000 and this was over 100,000 in spend. So that's why I sent uh, 79,000 to somebody else's spend, my friend who I was with, then I sent the balance to my account. I just thought I would mention that for full disclosure. So after sending to his account, I remained with 90,000 in my account, which I was sending to my own spend account. That's the one I'm going to show. So withdraw, select spend, I have a spend account, put in the amount withdrawing, 90,000 kwacha. Next, put in my phone number, confirm it, then click on next, then confirm all the details, confirm, put in my yellow card pin, confirm, and it's done. That's how easy it is to withdraw from yellow card to spend. It takes just a matter of seconds to a matter of minutes. So now I'm going to go to my spend wallet. I'll click on it. Then here in spend, you see that I've got 89,986 and not 90,000 because remember 15 kwacha was withdrawn to cover the yellow card withdrawal fees. Then when it comes to spend, you've got a number of options of moving the money. You can simply select here transfer. Then here in transfer, you've got an option to transfer to another spend account or you can transfer to a bank account. When you click on bank account or even mobile money, when you click on bank account, most of the banks are here. So you are able to transfer from spend to any bank account practically instantly. Just bear in mind that the fees can be on the high side. You can also transfer to any mobile money account, Airtel, MTN, Zamtel, Quacha. Just bear in mind that the fees would be a bit high. So my preferred method is withdrawing to Kazan. And the fees are also high. If you show here, you see here that... Uh, trying to get 89,986, the fee would be about 1,800, basically. So altogether, the fees of withdrawing 169,000 came to about 3,300. Okay, so now I'm going to answer a question on pricing of cryptocurrencies. A lot of people want to get into cryptocurrency where they are doing arbitrage, they buy cheap, sell high, and so they always contact me asking how much Bitcoin can I get for 100 kwacha, 300 kwacha, 500 kwacha, $1, $10, $100 and so it's really really difficult to know the pricing. So there's an app you can use and I also use yellow card. So I use an app or yellow card. We'll go to yellow card next. Here the app is called iCurrency. You simply go to the app and here you can put like uh, you can put an amount 
how much crypto would, I, would you get for one dollar so here it's going to show you, you can set all manner of cryptos there's uh, euro it's going to show you bitcoin uh, bnb ethereum ripple litecoin stellar lunems bat uh, so it shows you all these things huh? if you come here and check how much would one bitcoin set you back by it shows you here 29,333.91 what you need to realize is that these things are really difficult to price you don't know whether they are pricing using the buying rate selling rate or mid rate so a lot of times someone will just contact me and say they use this calculator so you find someone who use a calculator like this and then they'll, they'll say a hundred dollars uh, worth of bitcoin is 0 0.00341 and then uh, when i am transacting and paying them or receiving from them i'll either receive i'll either receive less than this or more than this and the reason for that is that depending on which exchange you're using which pricing mechanism you're using the price is always going to differ so that's why i try to steer clear on uh, advising people how much they would get for x amount of dollars or how much dollars they would get for x amount of crypto or bitcoin all i do is i just enter the market purchase or sell at market rates and then obviously deduct my commission i'm a nice guy but there's always usually about four percent standard commission deduct my commission and send the difference over so if in case you you have issues and always want to know and always want to know how best to price your bitcoin or how best your or how to value or price your bitcoin or how to know what your bitcoin is worth you can simply get the i currency app and it's really really helpful now another great thing about uh, yellow card is that yellow card has a lot of features which um by design are just there and they're usually in the background so in case you've got you want to buy or sell bitcoin and you don't have you don't even need to have the quacha there just simply go to the bitcoin wallet click on bitcoin then click here on buy so it brings you here it brings you here to the bitcoin calculator so here you can click buy or you can click sell so if you want to know how much bitcoin you can get for 100 kwacha just type in the amount 100 kwacha it will show you this is the exact amount of bitcoin you're going to get if it's a thousand kwacha that's the exact amount if you want to know if you want to you don't know the kwacha amount but you have got a fixed uh, bitcoin amount like one bitcoin you can just type in one there and it's going to show you how much one bitcoin is going to be worth for, or how much kwacha you need to have to purchase one bitcoin and it also works on the flip side here for the on the sell side so here on the sell side in case you have bitcoin you want to sell like a one bitcoin you want to sell one bitcoin how much kwacha are you going to get it's going to show you here uh, 502,496 498 kwacha so in case you've got any random amount of bitcoin and you want to know how much kwacha would you get selling that on yellow card you don't even need to have it in your account you can just do that come here on the calculator and you'll be able to see another thing about uh, yellow card is on usdt pricing okay so when it comes to usdt in case you want to buy one usdt you see that you're going to have to spend 17.56 kwacha this is because the commission is priced into the rate there's nowhere where you can actually buy or there's no exchange where you'd buy one usdt for one dollar they're all going to have commission priced in usually it's about four percent to eight percent priced in yellow card despite the commission being priced in it still works out to cheaper buying usdt here than buying on other exchanges which i've already talked about now on the sell side this is where yellow card gets to shine in case you've got usdt and you're selling at uh, you're selling one usdt you're not going to sell it at the rate of one dollar you're going to sell it at a premium in case you've got one dollar and you go to a bureau you're going to sell at 16 point something kwacha whereas if you've got one usdt and you're selling it on yellow card you're actually going to sell it at a little bit higher so you're going to have 17.14 uh, kwacha for each usdt so this is things that actually create opportunities for arbitrage and all it's really difficult to explain and talk about arbitrage but it's just a person like mr Mulos taking advantage of differences in rates from one platform to another platform and uh, this is another reason why i always highly recommend yellow card in that their pricing is really really transparent their pricing is really really geared and set up for the zambian market and buying bitcoin 
for USDT from Yellow Card, you actually do manage to buy it cheaper than you would other exchanges like Binance, CEX, or any of the others. And then also selling USDT on Yellow Card, you're going to sell it at a premium above the actual exchange rate. So this is something that you really, really do need to know and understand about Yellow Card. Okay, so while editing this video, I received some USDT and uh, I've decided to just uh, sell it or send it to my from Binance to Yellow Card and uh, show you. So first things first, we go to USDT, we copy our USDT TRC20 wallet address. Then we come here to Binance and I'm just going to come here and withdraw. So this is USDT TRC, USDT, I'm going to come to withdraw. I'm going to paste the wallet address here. Let me just come down to it. I'm going to paste the wallet address. I'm going to select the wallet type. It's a TRC20, a Tron. And I'm going to send the maximum amount, which is a 965.02 USDT. I'll withdraw. Then it's going to give me this uh, risk warning and uh, pop up here. Uh, of course, I fully understand the risks and all. So I'll just say, OK, confirm, continue. Then here I'm going to paste the SMS code, the email code and the Google Authenticator code and I'll submit. And it's done. So it's complete. Once I click on complete, it tells me your withdrawal request is being reviewed and will take approximately 12 hours. So it's between 5 minutes to 12 hours. So I'm just going to say complete. Usually it's not beyond 12 hours. So here the transaction is uh, being processed and I'm just going to wait a few minutes. About 5 minutes later it was uh, approved. Was it 2 minutes later? Sorry. Then uh, coming back to my uh, yellow card, the funds have been received. 965 USDT. I will scroll down. Then here you see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell it for Quacha, so 963. Uh, I'm going to sell the maximum amount and uh, I'm going to sell. The rate is 17.14. Okay, so it's done and it's done successfully. Coming to Zanaco exchange rate, you see that the buying rate is 16.93. So 17.12 is really, really higher than this. Coming to EcoBank, the rate is uh, almost similar. 16.922 and uh, this is the quacha equivalent for 965 dollars if i pull out the calculator so this is how much uh, i would get uh, at the bank and this is how much i actually got so subtracting the two you'll see that i got a 193.27 roughly about 190 quacha extra selling my usdt in uh, yellow card so the rate is higher the amount you receive is higher if you actually sell on yellow card now i'm coming to the quacha wallet i'm going to withdraw to spend i have a spend account put in the amount which is the maximum amount then i'm going to click on next i put in my phone number let me just change that put in my phone number click on next I'm going to approve this because that's I've confirmed the details. Let me just confirm it. Then I want to put in my PIN, my yellow card PIN, confirm that. And uh, it just takes a couple of seconds and it's done. So 16,522 has been sent, minus 15 kwacha has been sent to Spain. If I click on done here, you see that the funds are out of my yellow card. Now I'm going to go to my Spain wallet. Then here I'm going to my Spain wallet. Uh, there the funds are so it takes just a couple of seconds. Okay, so in this video I have tried to talk about uh, Crypto trying to talk in general terms and all comparisons with other platforms So what I'll say that if you are going to be doing a lot of crypto transacting whether it's arbitrage trading margin trading or just any sort of transacting cryptocurrency in significant volumes it makes sense to have multiple accounts and then once you've got multiple accounts, you actually get to realize that all platforms have issues. I've struggled to verify my ID on just about multiple platforms, not just yellow card, uh, depending on phone resolution, I mean, camera resolution on your phone, um, all sorts of things. Uh, some platforms would reject ordinary Zambian IDs like a driver's license, national registration card. Uh, some platforms reject Zambian bank statements for ID, I mean for uh, proof of residence verification. Some platforms reject uh, utility bills from Zambia. So it's really, really the wild, wild west out there. But with yellow card, provided you've got an NRC driver's license or passport, you will be able to register an account. Provided you are able to upload uh, and uh, verify the ID, your account will get verified. 
provided you do have a ut utility bill or a bank statement in your name you will be able to upgrade your account provided you are able to get a reference letter maybe a police affidavit a letter from the chief uh, courts or employers or uh, pastors preachers and the likes you will be able to upgrade your account as well so it's not just yellow card where there are occasional glitches and problems i have had funds stuck in binance i actually still have 146 dollars stuck in binance and just getting through to binance customer care it's a hassle it's a great platform but their customer care uses some sort of ai and then just to get to speak to an agent it's a real hassle i've had the same issue with cx IO. One time my account was restricted. I had to jump through hoops just to be able to speak to an agent. I had, someone accidentally gave me the email address to write to. But on the platform itself, there's also an AI that just takes you round and round and round. Uh, same thing with Coinbase, same thing with Paxful. So with Yellowcard, in case you need to contact them, just write them support at yellowcard.io and they will get back to you. Um, it's one of the easiest platforms to actually communicate with. Uh, when it comes to issues of uh, delayed crypto transacting or delayed crypto sending out, I'll tell you a true story. I've had crypto delayed sent from Binance. These are just Bitcoin. It's also been Litecoin, Stellar Lunems, Ripple, Bitcoin Cash. I've had them all delayed when sending from Binance once in a while. I've had the same thing happen when sending from Coinbase to external wallets. I've had the same thing happen when sending from CEX to external wallets. It's reached points where, you know, uh, the counterparty I've been transacting with made so much noise, said, no, crypto doesn't take this long. Send me screenshots, send me what, give me hash, hash codes. You know, they went to blockchain, they checked all these things. It's what it is about crypto. So sometimes crypto does delay. And I do admit after the yellow card recent updates, USDT has been delaying in sending. Uh, even uh, topping up from Spain to yellow card has been delaying after the, the, the update. Uh, these things do happen. And the fact that I've experienced delays and issues with other problems, with I mean with other platforms has made me a little bit more patient than the average consumer. So in spite or despite of all the challenges Yellow Card might have now, it's still the best platform among all the lot for a Zambian person transacting crypto in Zambia. It's cheaper to buy from Yellow Card as you have even seen from some of my earlier experiments. It's cheaper to send than other platforms as you've seen from some of my other experiments and it's easier cheaper and faster to load funds into yellow card and withdraw funds from yellow card 24 7 365 um, the only other platform where it's really really easy to withdraw to zambian uh, uh, payment platform is cex but they only do visa direct and then some banks visa direct like uba dollar card and uh, standbig you'll get the funds instantly. Some other banks, it could take you up to three or 21 days to get your funds. But with Yellow Card, you'll be able to get your funds out instantly. Other platforms like Binance and Paxful, you need to do peer-to-peer -peer trading to get your funds out into the Zambian financial system. Uh, platforms like Coinbase, you can only trade crypto within the platform. You can't withdraw out to Zambian banking or financial system. You can't deposit from Zambian banking or financial system. Trust Wallet is good if you're just sending and receiving or storing crypto. But if you want to do some trading, you need to trade all these other altcoins and all. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section if there's anything that I missed, anything that you'd like me to cover in future or subsequent videos, and I'll try my best to do that. But otherwise, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me your comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Follows. Bye.